Welcome everyone to the first Undisputed Worldwide, where we talk about everything Deathlock and some things that aren't. Before we talk about Deathlock products, let's talk about something that happened yesterday on August 13th. Uh, Jim the Anvil Nineheart passed away at the age of 63. Now, for those familiar with Jim, know that he was a pretty pretty good wrestler you know he was never a main eventer but that's not always like necessarily the the thing that defines your wrestling career what have you done in the main event how many titles have you held yada 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 you know it's like everyone needs that opponent you know everyone needs mid card people opening card people before you can go to a main event it sets the bar for the show and really pushes the, the the program and the promotion forward to have people good strong people like Jim Nineheart on your roster. He was uh he was acquired in by the WWE in 1985 when they bought out Stampede Wrestling. That's when they got all the the uh the hearts um Bret Hart, Jim Nineheart, Jimmy Hart. Um he did most of his best work, if not all of his best work, in tag team, where he really shone. He was part of the Hart Foundation, um, who were mostly heel, and they would turn face every now and then, especially during the push of Bret Hart. And I believe even Bret Hart would say, if it wasn't for Jim, that his career wouldn't have blossomed as well as it did, because Bret Hart is a very technical wrestler. He was very sound in the ring, but the man can't cut a promo to save his life. That's where Jim comes in, because Jim actually had pretty stellar promos. Um, you can watch all this on the WWE Network. I'm pretty sure that they'll showcase his, uh, his life, and hopefully we'll get a documentary on Jim that uh, kind of puts you in on some of his struggles that he has had over the few years. Um... His most notable feuds that I would say w would be against the British Bulldogs. Um, I'm a huge Davy Boy Smith fan. And um, so I was actually rooting for the British Bulldogs when they were fighting the Hart Foundation. But all the matches um, were very entertaining to me. Jim Nineheart was a very entertaining wrestler. And I believe that he should get more credit than what he has. Even though now that he has passed... He will get loads of credit, and they'll put him on the pedestal. We shouldn't do this with wrestlers. They should get the credit that they deserve while they're still alive, so they can know that they're appreciated. Now, the only Deathlock production event that we have going on right now is on August the 18th, UCW Rebellion. That's going to come to you live at 7 o'clock. The doors open at the American Legion 63 on 990 Millage Road. Be there to catch this event. Now, like most UCW cards, I don't know. I don't know the full card. And this is something that CD Bean does. He likes this dramatic reveal effect. We really don't know everything that's going on. But I am privy to some of the matches that are going to happen. Now the first one we're going to talk about is a non-title match. This is actually against uh, Billy Dupree and the demon himself, Night Stalker. Now for those who are unaware, during the last event... Uh, there, uh, during a double elimination, both Billy Dupree and Night Stalker were eliminated at the same time. However, on the way down, Night Stalker uh, stomped, crushed Billy Dupree's head, causing um, bleeding, uh, lots of blood. Uh, he gave the man stitches, maybe even a concussion. And his back was pretty banged up, too. Um... He wasn't happy about this, especially since apparently uh, Night Stalker was gloating about this uh, behind the stage. I wish I had the actual um, 
the actual uh, the interviews that, that, that they had conducted, but unfortunately, I still don't have this information. Now, I would I, I want to see this match because uh, th there's a redemption factor for uh, Billy Dupree. But I just I don't think he's got a chance against Night Stalker. I really don't. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. Um, Billy Free is pretty fired up. Uh, the fans are definitely behind him on this. They seen what happened. They seen the carnage, and they were definitely cheering him on. And um, we'll see if that carries over this show. Let's see if uh, he walks out the hero, or he walks out another victim. All right, now carry on. I am aware of a match that uh, involves the Octane title. Adrian, the Game Changer Davis, has retained the Octane Championship after a full year of nothing but straight, uh, straight, uh, unsuccessful title defenses with that belt. The belt um, cursed by Night Stalker, um, who just didn't win it, and it was like, if I can't have it, no one will. So um, that footage is around here somewhere. I'm gonna try to try to get it clean it up and uh, upload it uh, so everyone can see that event that had that didn't get a chance to see it a year ago that being stated last show Adrian Davis successfully defended his title against Night Stalker being the first octane champion to successfully defend his title now Davis isn't you know, uh, this isn't the first time that he's had the Octane Championship. This is, I believe, is actually his second title reign. But this first time, of course, he lost. Now, he's won. The only thing I can say, Davis, as many games you played, you would think that you would remember. You never equipped the curse item. We'll find out. We'll find out what's going to go on, if he can keep this belt a little bit longer, or if he's he fated to lose it at this event. Um, if he wins, I'll say that there's a new curse. The Adrian Davis is cursed to go in month in, month at, uh, out, and get his ass kicked and endure this pain <laughs> that he is, that he and only he is privy to. But we'll see. I just hope that your title reigns a short one and you get back on track. All right, so. The next thing we have is uh, for the tag titles. Now, RWO, the tag, current tag champions, will not be defending their title at Rebellion. This is basically due to the fact they don't have anyone to fight. And instead of just hastily slapping someone in the ring and just letting them beat the hell out of them, they're going to uh, basically establish a, a number one contender. And this is going to be done in a four-tag elimination match. Now, classic CD Bean, we don't know the tag teams that are going to be in this match. It was just announced that this is what's going to happen. But um, I'm going to throw my, uh, my team in, in the hat. Just, just throw it in there. Who I believe is going to be in it. One of the teams will have to be the division. And that is simply because of the bullshit that CD being pulled last month. Jeremy Cruz is better. He's reported that he's better. He's uh, he's reported that he is pissed off at you know the way his partner Justin Chambers was treated in the last show. For those unaware or needing a recap, last show Jeremy Cruz was injured. So CD being bullshittedly uh, stated that he would help Justin Chambers find a partner for the event and on a short notice he was able to bring out Nate Radke now the man had a the man had a whole month now granted yes Jeremy Cruz Jeremy Cruz did not uh, you know state that he was going to be uh, unable to attend the, the event until you know quite late into it you know he tried to recover and try to get back into the ring you know and, and try to do it he just he was just unsuccessful and you know fearing his uh his health he said look can't do it which is understandable but to sit there and say 
was that Nate Radke was literally the only guy that CD being confined that would fight with Justin Chambers. It's utter bullshit. So, nothing against, nothing against Nate because there is a good portion of the roster that Nate can go, can go out there and have a damn good match and um, do really well. He is definitely an up-and-comer, up and anyone who just dares to look at his record can see that he, he does hold his well. He does hold his own well against others that are his size, and which is why UCW needs a division to where Nate Gradke can shine. But um, Justin Chambers was pissed off about it as well. Rightfully so. The only thing I can say, CD Bean, the next time you want to pull this bullshit, please give us a courtesy flush and spray some damn lights off. Now, I do believe that they're going to be in there, and I do believe that they're going to win. The bearded duo was has never really gone wrong. Speaking of which, you know what they call a man without a beard? A woman. So, I believe that they will be at least one. Now, I have no idea who, who the hell else could be there. Um, the reason being is because I doubt Night Stalker is going to fight... And then team up with um, Sick or Fury and come out as Dead Reckoning. I doubt that. So really, I don't I don't know any other teams that are are really in this. So that's my name. That's my prediction. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Another, another quick one for you. What's the difference between a man and without a uh, man with and without a beard? One has a respect, and the other one doesn't have a beard. All right, now moving on, we're talking about Hunter Young, the undisputed UCW champion. Now, let me just state it: undisputed is uh, that's that's a that's a. That's a heavy word for Hunter Young right now. I'll say that he's a UCW champion. Undisputed? Nah, not after the last show. Not, not after what he did to yours, your your king, your sire, Christian Fury. And um, in an unjust call. In an unjust call. The only thing I can say is Hunter Young, he's either aware of his opponent or he's aware of the match, at least. Because he knows that he's defending it. I don't know if he's agreed to the opponent or the uh, opponent was just lined up. But a challenge was declared. It was accepted. We'll find out who that is when we get to the show. But beat the man this time. Beat the man this time. Because uh, you don't want a hollow, hollow ring. Like I said... Um, It'd be interesting uh, to see what Hunter Young has to do in the next couple months, but something tells me, something tells me that if he continues to fight this way, that it's not going to be good. Even the fans may begin to turn on him if he cannot legitimately, legitimately win a match. Because even the, even him winning the match, I mean, he 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 did cleanly get the pin. Um, uh, for for the championship itself, and then there was this huge roulette, and it just so happened to land on him on the way out. Any of the fighters cashing in could have been the champion um, when he won the belt. So we'll see. The only thing I can say is you better keep your damn head up, keep your nose clean, because uh, right now you have the biggest target in the entire promotion right there on your back and uh so far it doesn't look good for you buddy so that being said that is what i know uh that's going to happen at ucw rebellion um pretty exciting stuff i'm interested in, in, in 
uh, of course, the tag match. I want to see uh, Adrian Davis fight for the Octane title. See uh, what kind of beating he takes. Um, Night Stalker Billy Dupree, of course, is good. And we'll see what happens with Hunter Young. All right, so again, that will be live 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the American Legion 63 at 90 Millage Road. That is August the 18th. We have online flyers and flyers all around the CSRA, but uh, tickets are, I believe, $10 <clears throat> for adults, five for children. Um, come show your support, and uh, grow as a community with us. All right, and that's all I have to report. That is the first edition of Undisputed Worldwide. Thanks for listening.